and all of a sudden like a wall of, you know, poop smell hits you. Oof, no one wants that, right? An animal accident, 30,000 feet in the air. Passengers are frustrated and just plugging their noses after a dog pooped on a plane seat. This all happened on a flight from Denver to Portland Monday night. There were more than 100 people on board. Well, a woman sitting in an aisle seat toward the back of the plane had quite the mess on her hands after her little chihuahua relieved herself himself all over the lap. About an hour before the flight was set to land, passengers said it took about 10 minutes for flight attendants to come and clean up the mess. They also hung bags of coffee in the aisles to try and uh, cut down on that smell. But for many, as you can imagine, it just wasn't enough. It was all on her blouse, kind of on her pants. It was on the armrest, the outer armrest. It was on her seat and in the floor. Obviously, you don't, you don't want to be tied to a, a, a poop incident, right? But, uh, you know, it. We were we were patient with her like, no, I didn't lose my cool and uh, it, I was friendly because it's an accident and, you know, it's uh, so, yeah, I just think at the end of the day, you know, accidents happen. It's an unfortunate event, but, uh, you know, maybe United can learn something from this and, and we take something away from it. A very understanding gentleman there. Chief Transportation Correspondent and Veteran Pilot Mike Beeler joins us now to talk about this smelly plane problem. Uh, Mike, what struck out uh, to me there was that the, the flight attendants had to come clean this mess up. Right. Uh, why wasn't the passenger doing it? Would the pilot also ever get involved? All right, so here's the deal. I did speak with a seasoned flight attendant with a major airline today. She says the airline does give them special chemicals, cleaning solutions for waste bodily fluids, gloves, so they need to clean it up. But it would have been nice if the passenger helped. Here's the deal. The animal is supposed to be in a crate or in a carrier. Yeah. You are not allowed to take the animal out. And in the carrier, it has to be big enough to fit under the seat in front of you, big enough for the dog or the cat to be able to stand up and turn around. Also has to have like a towel or some pa absorbent padding just in case. Don't feed your dog or cat before you get on the flight. Don't give them water if it's just a short flight because you don't want them to have to, you know, relieve themselves. Well, now, um, let me just go I'm ahead. So, go I'm ahead. So sorry. <laughs> Does the captain get involved now if it's explosive diarrhea, a person or an animal? If it's bad enough, the captain makes the ultimate decision. Do we divert? Because now it's hazmat hazardous material. Mm -hmm. So he or she can decide this is really offending people. It's hazardous. We're going to divert and land somewhere else or if it's close to the destination the land. It's a very embarrassing and uncomfortable situation Absolutely. for yeah, everybody. No, no one wants to deal with that. You're all in a metal tube together. Um, but we have bigger dogs, right? Emotional yes. support animals and service animals. They can't fit in a crate. Um, we see them on planes all the time. Right. But what are the other options for larger? Pets, okay, maybe? so for service animals, this doesn't apply. Right. They can be out of a crate underneath you, but they have to be credentialed. Don't take your pet and say, oh, this is a service animal. You have to have documents, um, credentials and licenses and all that stuff. Now you can put your dog or cat or other animal in the cargo hold. Typically American Airlines just wants that for a veterans, military active service members for their dogs. Otherwise you can ship the dog or the cat or the rabbit or the ferret or the bird. Here's the deal. Not all airplanes accept pets. It depends on the ventilation system, like the Airbus 320 does not. Not all of them have climate controlled cargo holds. So they have to be able to breathe. It has to be pressurized and climate controlled. Let's say the airplane is. But most airlines like American will not accept pets if it's below 45 degrees or higher than 85 degrees outside. Now you may think, well, so what? They're in a climate controlled hold but they have to be loaded onto the plane and unloaded and maybe spend some time in that heat or cold mm -hmm. and they won't accept those animals. They, they don't want to put them in a hardship. Also, you cannot sedate or tranquilize your animals. In their cargo hold, they have to be able to stand up because it's turbulent or whatever. They can't be out of it and in the, um, in the cabin, you can't sedate them either because it could be respiratory mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. The animals can die. Right. So go to your airline's website. You have to make a reservation for animal anyway. Anyway, pay $125 yep. to be in the cab yep. and Done that a before. lot to do. Yeah. So research it. Research it and maybe drive next time if you can. Or if you can take that a trip. House pet sitter. Or put a diaper. <laughs> put a diaper go. on the pet. Oh, All right. Lots Make to consider, Mayke. Thank you.